I'm Emily with Nancy's Notions and today I want to talk to you a little bit about English paper piecing and the super easy starch basting method. First off, you need a little pressing surface. It's got a nice thermal top. You can use it on a tabletop, in your living room, while you're watching TV. Another thing that this kit comes with is a starch brush. You can refill this little guy because you just unscrew it spray your starch in there and you can use this guy over and over this is a nice set of size 10 needles they are really really slender they have a nice small eye and the most important part they're really sharp so when you're hand stitching you're not going to run into a lot of resistance from the fabric lastly in the kit um, we have this fingertip stiletto that you wear on any finger you're comfortable with but i'll show you where this comes into play in just a moment these are pre-cut freezer paper templates. They are thicker. The one side is covered with just the slightest amount of wax, which is gonna come in handy when you need to put it onto the fabric. It, it doesn't wanna shift when, when the wax melts in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my trusty Clover Mini Iron and I'm gonna lay this paper piece so that the wax side is down. We're gonna hold that in and let the wax work its magic with this scrap piece here. The thing I love about English paper piecing is it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to eyeball this and cut about a quarter inch. What we're going to use is Missy Carpenter's fantastic starch method. And I've already got my starch brush loaded. You can see the liquid in there. That's just regular starch. So we're going to just very carefully get our edge of the fabric nicely wet down with starch and we'll take our trusty clover mini iron and we'll start to push that in i'm not pushing it all the way i don't want it to crease up here or over here i only want it to crease over the paper now i'm going to wet this side and i'm going to continue around and watch this so now because i didn't crease that edge now i can go in just to the edge of the freezer paper and by not creasing this side i gave it a lot more leeway to lie as flat as it wants to. It wants to lie very flat. So this is, it's so easy. And again, I can just turn this, starch. See how we're getting that in there. And we're not going over the edge of the paper, but we're always pushing that corner down so it lies nice and flat. Look at how perfect and beautiful that is, this perfect, beautiful hexi. We're gonna do a square here, but I wanted to talk about fingertip stiletto that's included with the kit. So the finger stiletto is very, very helpful, especially if you're a beginning paper piecer and, or maybe, you know, your dexterity isn't what it used to be. You can get right up next to that and hold that down without worrying about burning your finger because the finger stiletto gets in there for you. This is my lap app. This thing is fantastic for sitting in your easy chair in your living room while you're watching your favorite shows, or you can take this on the road with you. Um, I just can loosen these things and adjust the height, adjust the angle. So I'm gonna leave it right up here. And this allows me to lean back and get comfortable without hunching over my work. Uh, this thing is fabulous. It's got this wonderful padded cover that I can work from for my embroidery and my paper piecing, but it's also got a removable thermal cover so that I can do ironing on this. Uh, it's got a nice pocket right here, so it's got a spot for my scissors. I'm just gonna start with these two. So I've got my needle threaded. Um, beginners, I would suggest using a 100% polyester thread like Aerofil by Madeira. Just because polyester thread is so much smoother, to make it even smoother, I love using beeswax or thread heaven. Once you get comfortable paper piecing and you want to create larger pieces, heirloom quality pieces, I would suggest using silk thread. Silk is very smooth like polyester, but it's not synthetic and it's Thinner. It has a very, very low profile and it blends really easily. But for today, we're going to use polyester thread just because it's nice and easy for beginners. You're going to thread your needle, knot it, take the two pieces that you want to stick together. We're going to come up from behind. You can see right there, I've got it in my nice little fold. And there's a little bit of a tail 
sticking out there, so we're just going to fold that down so it's kind of out of the way. See how I got that tail folded down? We're going to match up our edges and we're going to do a ladder stitch. So what we're doing here is we are going right next to the edge of the paper, but just along it. We're not going to puncture the paper. We're going to just ride the edge of that paper. I want to go back in directly opposite that on the other piece of fabric. So if you can see, I've come out here and I'm literally, it's going to be going back in just at a right angle. Can you see that? So that if you were to loosen your threads and pull the pieces apart, they would create like a little ladder. I'll show you what the ladder will look like in just a moment. So can you see how it looks like a ladder when I pull the two pieces apart? That is a true ladder stitch. And a true ladder stitch is much more invisible than a whip stitch, but a whip stitch is also considered correct for doing English paper piecings. I'm going to continue with this ladder stitch, get this all the way to the end, sew these pieces together, and then I'm going to show you whip stitching uh, when I put my other diamond piece on. So let's go to the edge here. So now we're going to fit this little guy in there so that the tail goes nicely behind the other tail. And I'm going to talk about whip stitching from this corner all the way down to the other corner. So we're going to start again by hiding the knot behind here. We're going to place those pieces so that they look perfect. And then we're going to fold this piece so that the right sides are together. And we're going to do a fancy schmancy little whip stitch. We're going to come in on this side and come up at a diagonal. See this? But just ever so slightly. We're not going to, again, we're not going to let our needle puncture the paper that the fabric is folded around because we can use those fabric pieces over and over again. So here's this little whip stitch and you're going to come across from where your thread came out and again, little diagonal. Everybody's whip stitch looks a little bit different. Mine is small. Okay, and when we get to the end here, this corner, we're going to go through at a diagonal, even. Oh my goodness, that's gonna look so pretty. Now watch. Now see that when I open it, it's still very nearly invisible. It still looks great. Let's just pretend this project is finished. I'm going to take some of these out right now. So we've got nice crisp edges and we're going to use our tweezers and I can kind of just pull that right out. Look at that. No worse for wear and they should come out so easily because you didn't puncture the paper at all with the needle. So they're not actually stitched in. They're just holding the shape of your project until you're all set and your whole project is going to look so crisp and perfect even when the paper is out. And now these guys, you can just lay them onto your piece of scrap fabric, press them down, make sure the shiny side is down because these are still, they have a nice wax coating still, they will still stick to your scrap fabric and you can trim away just like we showed you in the beginning of the video. So as a nice added bonus to this video, Missy Carpenter has made us an exclusive pattern for paper piecing and it is a really sweet little spool of thread. And there's a free printable. If you want to follow our link, click on the card. You can incorporate this into a mug rug. You can do a border of them on a quilt. This is a four inch square. You can enlarge it if you're, if you're a little wary of doing smaller pieces. That's totally fine. So we hope that you enjoy that. And thank you, Missy Carpenter, for sharing this incredible pattern with us. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up or a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe.